In this video, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite ways to produce a framework or border. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the background layer. We're going to use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J, which is now duplicated our background layer. Coming over to the toolbox, make sure you've got the default colors. If you've got any other colors, press D on the keyboard. Pressing D on the keyboard will restore those default colors. Black as a foreground, white as the background. Now white as a background is going to be very important and I'll come back to this in just a moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up the crop tool. Yes, we are going to be using the crop tool to create a border or framework. I'm going to come to the top corner, I'm going to click down, I'm going to drag it out over the image, something like that. And there it is. That's looking pretty good. We're going to come up to the side grab handle and pressing and holding down the Alt or the Option key. Holding down Alt or Option, good, because now when you click down, you drag out the side, the other side comes out at exactly the same distance, something like that. That would be pretty good. That looks, yeah, that looks good like that. I'm just going to release the mouse, releasing Alt or Option. Job done so far. Let's come down to the bottom. Clicking on the bottom, once again, pressing down. Alt or Option. We're now going to click. We're going to drag this out into that area there. That looks pretty good like that. Releasing the Alt or the Option key. And you can see the top goes in. But hold down Alt or Option. And you notice the way it sort of springs back out again. So make sure you're holding down the Alt or the Option key. Now release the mouse. Now release Alt or Option. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't I use canvas size? Well, I like the way this is flexible. You can actually see the amount that you're pulling it out. Plus, it also allows you, if you want to add a little bit more space to the bottom, you can now just simply click on the bottom grab handle and you can pull that out a little bit further again, perhaps into that position there. Once you click on the green tick, watch what happens. It's now going to fill the background layer, or should I say fill around the background layer with white. And that's because we reset the colors. White is the background. If you had black or any other color, it would fill it with that color. Talking about filling colors, if I just switch off layer one, I'm going to click on the background layer. You'll notice you can still see the image. Now, if you want this to be solid white, all you need to do is use a very, very simple shortcut. Using Command Delete, so that's Command Delete on a Mac, it is Control Backspace, that's Control and Backspace on a PC, fills the entire layer with white. Incidentally, if you'd like to try it with a black background, let's just switch layer one on, so this is now visible, but we're still working on the background layer. If you press Option Delete, that's Option Delete on a Mac, it is Alt Backspace, that's Alt Backspace on a PC, you fill it with the foreground color, which is black, so it's entirely up to you. I'm pretty sure I like white, so I'm going to go back to white, and there it is. Right, let's click on layer one. We're going to go to layer. We're going to drop down to layer styles, style settings. Now, when this opens, we're going to click straight on drop shadow, and let's move it a little bit further out into that area. Because when we come down to size, when we increase the size, as I start to bring this out, you'll notice the way the drop shadow is coming out equally to all four sides. Something like that looks pretty good move your cursor out, you'll find it's got the move tool. And if you click down, you can move the drop shadow into any position you like. I quite liked it the way it was. So I'm going to bring it back so it's equal to all four sides, moving it slightly to the left there. That looks better. Right, looking pretty good like that. Now, I also want to apply a stroke border to this. Now, it's not going to work by using this dialog box, and I'll show you the reason why. When we click on stroke and we take the stroke size up, OK, forget the fact that it's actually black. But if you look at it, you can see the way it's curving around the edges. That is because it's putting the stroke on the outside of the image. So we're going to untick that and we're going to use another method to produce a stroke border. So for the moment, I'm just going to click OK. Just apply in the drop shadow. You'll notice the little effects icon there. Double click. You can bring it back. You can come straight into the uh, drop shadow. You can make any adjustments as well if you really want to. Right, now for that stroke border. Bring your cursor up over the thumbnail. Pressing Command or Control, you'll notice the way your cursor changes, gets a little square on the back. Click down. You have now got a selection around the image. We're going to put in a new empty layer. Putting in a new empty layer is going to take that selection onto that layer 2. Now all we need to do is go to Edit, Stroke Outline Selection, 
and I'm got a width of yeah 16 pixels you can of course click down you can move it around to whatever size you want but I think 16 for this size image would be pretty good but you may need to experiment uh, with the actual width on this the color I'm going to change to white so clicking down in the color there and we've now got white now this is the important part location inside in other words all 16 pixels are going to be inside this selection if you do it center you will have eight pixels here and you'll have eight pixels there if you've got the outside it'll be just like we saw when we make it went into the uh, layer styles it'll be around the outside so all of the pixels are on the outside and it'll give a curved area there which doesn't look particularly good so location inside click OK to that there it is that looks really good like that using command D control D there it is there's our border we have now applied it to our image now the one thing I'd like to do is just drop down layer 2 to layer 1 if you come up to layer if you take a look at merge down which is command E control E there's the shortcut if I click on this you'll notice the way that layer 2 has now merged down onto layer 1 I'm gonna switch this layer one off because there's one further thing I'd like to do to our background layer now we have filled this with white it is a solid color there is nothing in there there's no pixels so to give it just a little bit of uh, definition we're going to go to filter noise we're going to go to add noise and uh, let's just take this up into that area there so we can actually see noise let's switch off monochromatic and there it is with a nice bit of color as we can see in our little preview window now the first thing we're going to do is you can either have Gaussian or you can have uniform. I'm going to go for uniform. We're going to go for monochromatic and I'm going to drop this right the way down. We're going to be using very low numbers. Now, yeah, previews tick so you can actually see it live on the screen as well. I'm going to take it down even further into that area there. And if I just switch this on and off, you'll see there it is without any of the noise in it. If I switch it on, you'll notice we now get a little bit of mottling. That looks better like that. Click OK. Switching this back on, it just helps it look more natural. It makes it look as if it is actually on a card background, on a matte background for want of a better word. So there it is. Let's click back on layer one. Using that shortcut, remember it? Yes, it is Command E or Control E. That merges it down. There is our finished image. I'm going to right click. We're going to place it onto a black background I'm going to press tab on the keyboard which removes the panels there is our finished image it's just a great way it's one of my favorite ways of actually producing a framework or border incidentally one thing you might like to do is by increasing the depth on the bottom you may like to put titles names or whatever on that bottom area there I've just given it this sort of uh, look but you can do whatever you want it is extremely flexible to use so there it is, there's our finished framework. Hope you've enjoyed the video, but until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.